Start writing smarter formulas in Excel by mastering the dot operator. Take a look at this simple example where I have this range of data and we want to multiply the quantity by price. This is a really simple formula and most people would achieve it by simply multiplying these two values of each column and then by dragging down the range with the fill handle. But this produces six separate formulas. And in modern Excel, we want to stop dragging the fill handle. It is not dynamic and it is error prone. We will not be notified of anybody typing over one of those formula values. And unfortunately, these are things that happen. So what we want to do is write that in a single formula, which would prevent people over typing values and would also mean it's dynamic, auto expanding as values are added or removed. Now the problem we face is that if we were to write a formula and select a larger range than is needed, then when we do this, the formula will work fine, but it does produce these additional formula cells. And they contain the hyphen because of how they're formatted to represent a zero. Now what we want is this single formula approach, but we want it to only expand into those additional rows when required. And the answer to removing those unnecessary blanks at the bottom is trim range or the dot operator. Now, if I go into that first formula cell, we can add a function named trim range. And this will trim a range to the last used cell in any direction. As I look at the arguments, it prompts us for the range. So for me, that's B2 to B15. And as I put in a comma, it asks for the row trim mode and whether I want to trim the leading trailing or both ends. And another comma would ask for the column trim mode. Again, do I want to trim the leading unused cells, the trailing unused or both, which is the default for both row and column. So to use trim range in the typical sense, I would just close the bracket so it's trimming both sides of the rows and columns. And I can add this for the price as well, trim range, and pressing enter will now trim that range so it's only using the used cells, yet it is dynamic. And if I add in a new item, and some new values, as I do so, that range will auto expand as it realizes it is now used. And all of this is achieved with a single cell formula, making it easier to maintain, dynamic and robust. Anyone over typing one of these values would trigger a spill reference. So we're aware of an obstacle in its way and it provides a very simple fix as well. This is modern Excel at its best. So trim range is doing a great job there and I would use trim range when I know I want to trim all areas of that used range. But in this example, it seems a little bit excessive with those two trim range functions. So what we could do instead, as I remove them from here, is bring in the dot operator. And we can put a dot operator to trim over the leading or trailing side of those rows or columns. So in this example, I just need to trim the trailing side. So if I put a dot to the right hand side of that range operator, just before the trailing part of the range, and I'll do the same for column C here and pressing enter now gives me the same result as before, but it is much more concise. And this is the dot operator in modern Excel. You may have seen me use it in some of my recent videos 
such as my run in total video to create that dynamic scan function. Now I know what some of you are thinking at this point, rather than selecting down to row 15, could we select the entire column? So can I change this formula and select all of column B and all of column C, and then I can use that dot operator before the trailing end of both ranges. Doing this would work great, but on pressing enter, I do have this value error at the beginning, and that's because of the header row. You can also see that final product hanging out of the end of the range. So a really useful function that is brilliant in combination with the dot operator and trim range is drop. Because when we're using entire column or entire row references, that will allow us to drop that header row. So coming back to that formula, I can add a drop function around this, and it will ask me how many rows or columns to drop. I will ask it to drop the first row, and I'm running this formula. We now have a dynamic single cell formula that ignores the headers and will only include the used range. As you saw within the trim range function, we can use it across columns in addition to across rows. So let's take an example like this, where we want to run a sum function for each column. And again, we don't want to do old school practices like a sum function such as this, using a really defined range that I then have to select and drag across, possibly to additional cells in preparation for future values. Otherwise, I'm dragging it each month. Not dynamic and prone to error. We're going to use a modern Excel technique and use the by coal function to perform these sums from a single formula and utilize the dot operator to trim that range. So we could use by coal. And in this by coal function, I would select the range. Now I could select a range like I did a moment ago in preparation for future months and I probably know how many months. But for this example, I'll select the entire rows just like I did with the columns previously. I can then put in my comma and ask for the use of the sum function. Closing that bracket and pressing enter will produce a spill error. Now, why do I get a spill error? Well, it's because I'm trying to do this on the entire row four to seven and I'm in the third column. Therefore, I can't return all of the values for the whole row if I'm not beginning from the first column, column A. Now, if I was to bring in the trailing dot operator here before row seven, so we can do the same with rows as we do with our columns and our ranges, and I press enter, and now we have cut those trailing unused cells but I've got these two zeros for columns A and B. I can come back and bring in a dot operator for the lead inside of that range. That would remove the leading unused cells, but I've still got the zero for the headers, column B, which is a used range, just not one that I want to use in the formula. So we know the drill here, it's drop again, and I can bring in the drop function to remove that first column. Closing the bracket on this, and we have our result. And in case any of you are wondering, we could have used drop to remove the first two columns instead of that dot operator. But obviously the purpose of this video is about trim range. And I wanted an example showing a really modern Excel formula across rows and the use of both the leading and trailing dot operators. If an additional month was to be added, then as we do this, you can see 
that the formula is updating. Brilliant use of our dot operators in Excel. So this function and these operators have really changed the game. Avid followers of this YouTube channel will know that I'm a big fan of using tables in Excel, but not everything is a table. And when we're utilizing array formulas and Lambda functions, these dot operators are going to be very, very valuable. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you want to be notified of the latest videos at this channel, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you again soon.